Well, hello there, happily married woman. It is Dr. Siobhan here. Good morning. Good morning. It is not even 6 a.m. yet, and here I am doing a live stream. I don't often get the chance to come and talk with you in the morning, but I figured I would try it today and see how it works. So, if you've been following me this week, you know that I have started a live stream series sort of all about getting out of our feelings, specifically talking about negative thinking and how to break free of negative thinking. And so the first day I talked about really being able to get to a place of acceptance um, and not fighting with the reality of your situation, whatever that is, whatever is not going the way that you would like. Yesterday, I did a live stream that was really focused more on looking at whatever challenge you are facing in any area of your life as an opportunity for your growth and to learn the lesson that you are supposed to learn and apply that lesson to your life. So tomorrow I am going to continue on with that live stream series and do step three, which is all about gratitude. But I wanted to delve a little bit more deeply into this concept of personal growth and evolving and becoming the best version of ourselves because that's what the, you know this is all about essentially. And so when I think about this concept of being a happily married woman, when I think about this group, when I think about um, the message that I want to share with you all, one of the key ingredients of being a truly happily married woman, a truly happy woman in any area of your life is really to be intentional about how you show up. And I personally like to think about this in the morning. Usually, you know, after a good night's rest or an okay night's rest, I wake up refreshed and really ready and motivated to have a certain type of day, usually a good day, right? And so I like to start my day thinking about like, how do I want this day to go? Like, how am I going to show up to this day that I've been blessed to receive? And so I encourage you to develop the same practice as well. And so I wanted to talk today about being intentional. And essentially what that means is that you just commit yourself to the day um, to being a certain way. And I've asked in this group before, you've probably seen questions about like, what are the three qualities you want to embody today? And how can you be more kind and loving and all of those things? And so that's what being intentional is really all about. It's being deliberate about how you are being that day. Right. And so that's what we're going to do today. And what I want you to do is as you think about how you want to show up is just to sort of have some way of reminding yourself about that all throughout the day, because it's very easy to forget. We set great intentions in the morning, then someone upsets us or frustrates us and we've forgotten all about it. And I thought I would just offer three, um, excuse me, four, I would offer four qualities that you just might want to consider. Maybe you have your own and that's great, but I wanted to lift up and highlight four particular qualities that as I talk with women um, and as I think about my own experience in my own marriage and life that are sort of some of the ones that we constantly keep um, needing to return to and constantly need to remember. And so the first one is communication, right? I know that communication is an ever-evolving process. It's also one of the areas that I believe every single couple, every single individual can approve upon in some way, shape, or form. And so when it comes to communication, maybe an intention that you'd like to set is to be careful in your communication, to be careful in your tone, to be careful in your word choice, to hold your tongue in some instances. It's so funny how we get into the habit of making these side comments that are just not helpful at all. Like they don't bring us closer together. They don't encourage and support someone. They're just like smart remarks, right? So how many of you are guilty of sort of having a smart mouth and just having these sarcastic and side comments um, that ultimately are just damaging to your relationship, damaging to your own self because it's just inviting more negativity into your mindset, your heart, your space, and coming out of your mouth. That's essentially what is happening. And so as I thought about 
you know, a way that if someone is working on their communication, if they desire to be more careful in their communication with their husband or anyone that they come in contact with today. I thought I would share actually um, one of the uh, declarations from my book, uh, Voices in Your Ear, New Conversations to uh, Transform Your Mind and Renew Your Marriage, because, you know, the process and the habit of reading affirmations or declarations or scripture, it's like planting a seed into your mind that will um, hopefully germinate and take root over the course of the day or whatever period that you are sort of meditating and um, thinking about that particular uh, declaration or affirmation. And so if you are making the intention today to be careful in your communication, because you know, that's really important. Um, I just thought I would read one of my favorite ones from the chapter on communication. And this one says, I communicate in a way my husband is sure to receive. Mm. I do not blame or point out his faults. Instead, I lovingly encourage and guide him to do the things that honor and respect whom he wants to be as a person, right? So I love the phrase, lovingly encourage and guide him. Because I think so often, you know, when our husbands fall short um, or they don't meet our expectations, it's easy to get more to a critical um, orientation, a judgmental orientation, rather than seeing our role as to lovingly guide him, right? I am a mother, and I know many of you are mothers as well, and I have small children, they're one in three. And so when they may make, make mistakes or they're not in control of their emotions or they're doing things that just are not the habits we want to um, have them uh, instill in their life, it's my job to not make them feel bad, right? They're learning, even though I think maybe they should know better to not put your feet on the table, they don't and they're testing boundaries and all of those things. And so I see my role to lovingly guide them. As a mother, I'm sure for you, many times as you're correcting your children, that's easy to do, to do so in a loving way because you see your role to nurture them and to provide them with an example. And I think so often when it comes to our spouses, we forget that, that it's so easy to just look at that man who is a grown man who should know better or who should figure out some of the things we'd like for him to figure out. Um, and it's so much easier to just be critical. And the sort of catch 22 is that at the end of the day, we want him to maybe correct something or to be a certain way. And yet we're using negative reinforcement. We're using negative tactics to try to get him to do that rather than positive reinforcement. And so if you are a person who tends to sort of be a little bit careless with your communication or you have those sarcastic comments and today you really want to focus on being careful with your communication, I encourage you to just continue to think about this declaration, which again is I communicate in a way my husband is sure to receive. I do not blame or point out his faults. Instead, I lovingly encourage and guide him to do the things that honor and respect whom he wants to be as a person, right? Because at the end of the day, we all want to be good spouses. We really do, whether <laughs> it seems like it or not. I know sometimes it may seem like your husband wakes up in the morning and just determined to like make your life miserable um, or to frustrate you or to annoy you or to not do his part, but that's not the case at all, right? So that is just a declaration, something to put in um, your spirit, a little seed to sow in the area of communication. So maybe communication is not the thing you want to be intentional about today. Maybe you want to focus on being patient. That's one, again, hands down when I talk to women is so common. And maybe you want to be very intentional today about being patient, about being slow to anger. and in order to do that, I really suggest, you know, that when you find yourself running out of patience, when you find yourself wanting to nudge and push, I really want you to just take that as a sign that you need to slow down, that whatever it is, is really not as big a deal as maybe you're making it out to be. I want you to just learn to press the pause button. So when you're feeling impatient, 
that is a sign and that is a trigger to press the pause button. And that's something I have to remind myself of all the time. Breathing helps. Um, and I wanted to just share an affirmation from um, my book that can really help you if today you want to be intentional about being patient, okay? And so this one says, I exercise patience with my husband today. When I am tempted to push, nudge, or pressure, I will take that as a sign to relax, to ease into patience, and to stay there for a while, okay? I exercise patience with my husband today. You just make up your mind right now that that's what you're gonna do, no matter what he's doing, no matter how slow he's moving, no matter how indifferent he seems about things, right? I exercise patience with my husband today. When I am tempted to push, nudge, or pressure, I will take that as a sign to relax, ease into patience, and stay there for a while. So again, it's just being able to recognize your triggers and to appropriately channel that energy in the right direction. So usually when I get a little bit impatient, I like feel it in my body, like my heart rate, excuse me, my heart rate, my heartbeat races. I will get it right. It's early. It's early. Mm. Um, my heartbeat races and I just feel a little anxious in my body. And that is a telltale sign to me that I need to relax. That whatever it is, I'm letting my emotions get ahead of me and I need to just take a step back, right? I just need to sit down for a minute. And so I encourage you to do the same if patience is an area that you want to be intentional about today, okay? Um, another one that may be helpful for you to consider, and I just want you to pick one. One for today. You may go back to this video and decide like tomorrow you want to do something else. But just pick one for today because I don't want you to get overwhelmed and not do anything. Um, is around being compassionate and offering grace and understanding. So one of the things that really helps me to tap into um, being compassionate and extending grace to my husband is to just think about the grace of God, that how many times do we do things that are a total and complete disappointment to him? We go against his word. We don't trust him. We don't even talk to him sometimes. We expect him to just deliver on our prayers and our requests, yet we aren't obedient. We aren't reverent. We aren't um, worshiping him or engaging with him in the way that we would like, you know, he's like that constant friend who's like, hey, you know, give me a call. Like, hey, let's hang out. Hey, let's talk. Um, and then we come to the him, right? And it's just all about, can you give me this? Lord, please help me do this. Lord, please help me do that. Yet, he extends such grace to us. He doesn't hold that against us. He knows that we are perfect, that we're going to make mistakes, that we're going to fall short, that we're not going to live up to all of the characteristics that he's given us the power to do, and yet he doesn't hold it against us. And so when I think about that, when I think about his mercy, when I think about his grace that he's extended to me, it just puts me in a position of remembering how grateful I am for that, how grateful I am that he doesn't judge me for my mistakes, that he forgives me every single time over and over and over again. And so as you think about your husband, this imperfect person that you've committed to love, that you've committed your life to, it's so important that you can just get into a place of putting yourself in his shoes, of extending a little bit of compassion, of easing up on him. Um, again, back to that lovingly guiding instead of criticizing, so important, right? So if that's an area that you're like, yeah, Siobhan, I probably should pay attention to that today. I want you to commit yourself to being intentional in that area, in compassion and understanding and extending grace to your husband. And of course, in the book, I have a declaration, I have 10 of them actually, on that particular topic, but here's one that I'll read to you now. And it says, I am committed to backing my husband and to giving him the benefit of the doubt. When I don't understand, I will not make assumptions that leave me thinking negatively about him. I will search for the good in his behaviors and words. I will be quick to express my support 
and careful to challenge or accuse him of things without having a full understanding. Okay, I'll read that one again. I'm committed to backing my husband and to giving him the benefit of the doubt, right? We all just want to know that someone has our back, that they'll give us the benefit of the doubt. And he does too. When I don't understand, which sometimes can be often, when I don't understand, I will not make assumptions that lead me thinking negatively about him. Mm. I will search for the good in his behaviors and words. I will be quick to express my support, yet careful to challenge or accuse him of things without having a full understanding. That's grace and that's compassion. You are quick to express your support, yet careful or cautious to accuse him of things when you don't have a full understanding. So again, just food for thought if an area that you feel like you want to be intentional in is offering grace and compassion to your husband today. And then the fourth one that I thought I would share with you this morning is forgiveness. Mm, forgiveness. So we talk a lot about forgiveness here in this group, and it usually comes up when it comes to really big things like affairs or lies or betrayals of some sort. And for sure, forgiveness applies there. But something that I'm really coming to have a greater appreciation for is forgiveness for the smallest of things, right? So for those tiny disappointments or those tiny unmet expectations, right? Whether that's him calling you at a certain time or him informing you of something or him helping out around the house as much as you would like or him complimenting you or him reaching out to spend more time with you. Those are the little tiny daily decisions, daily interactions that if you don't have your mind focused on forgiveness, that you let build up into big resentment that color the way that you see your husband, that make you view him in a negative light, even when he's undeserving of that view. And so I've begun to really look at forgiveness as sort of a minute by minute, conversation by conversation, action by action experience. And that can mean that maybe you had a conversation with your husband and he said something that hurt your feelings or he didn't respond in the way that you wanted. Forgive him of that. Right? It's not only to those big mistakes, those big disappointments in your marriage, but even the tiniest ones. Because when you choose to forgive and let those things go, you just free yourself up to having such a better, stronger, more connected relationship with each other. And so on the topic of forgiveness, again, it's a full chapter in my book, Voices in Your Ear. Um, I wanted to just read um, one of those uh, declarations, and this comes from day six. And it says, today I make forgiveness a minute-by-minute minute decision. Whenever feelings of resentment and hurt creep into my heart, I will meet them with an even stronger effort to feel love, peace, and compassion. I let my spirit guide the way, for it will never lead me in the wrong direction. Right? I'll read that again. Today I make forgiveness a minute-by-minute minute decision. Whenever feelings of resentment and hurt creep into my heart, I will meet them with an even stronger effort to feel love, peace, and compassion. I let my spirit guide the way what will never lead me in the wrong direction. I often like to ask myself, and you've probably heard some version of these questions, like what would love do in this situation? What would love, what would Jesus, what would God, how would they respond in this situation? And that's the standard that we should really hold ourselves to. That's the model that we should constantly be striving for. Not our ego, right? Because our ego is the thing that only thinks about ourselves. Our ego is the thing that will have us distant and disconnected and divided from our spouse. And when you feel those feelings, right, when you feel those feelings pulling you away from each other, that's when you have to be even more motivated to meet that feeling with love, with peace and compassion. 
and it's hard to do, believe me. I am not going to sit up here on my high horse like some Pollyanna, like, yeah, just decide to forgive and like it happens automatically. No, it requires that you continue to infuse into your mind right thinking, that you infuse into your mind the right resources, the right influences that will continue to remind you to be in that position, right? To be in that position of being careful in your communication, to be in position and be intentional about being patient, to be intentional about being understanding and compassionate and extending grace, and to be intentional about being forgiving. So again, it's early in the day, right? What is your intention? What are you going to be deliberate about doing and being in your life and in your marriage today? And the ones that I just offered as a suggestion, just pick one, careful in your communication, patient, meaning that you're slow to anger, being compassionate, understanding, and extending grace, or considering forgiveness as a minute-by-minute -minute decision. So I would love to know what you are working on. For me, it is going to be extending compassion, grace, and understanding. Hard but definitely worth a try, right? Some of these things, let's just try it. Let's just try it on like we're trying on a new shirt or a new pair of shoes in that dressing room, right? Just try it on and see how it feels. I would love to hear how it goes for you. And if you liked any of these declarations and affirmations, and if you felt like, man, I really need to get that book, um, that would be helpful for me, definitely do that. You can get a copy, a signed autograph copy of Voices in Your Ear, New Conversations to Transform Your Mind and Renew Your Marriage on my website at berelatable.com forward slash voices. Um, if you're wondering if it's on Amazon, it is. I can't sign it when it comes from Amazon, but it absolutely is on Amazon. You can find it there, share it with all your friends. Um, but definitely take a look at the book. Um, there is a sample on my website, so you can delve a little bit more deeply into the structure. You can see all the table of contents, how the book is laid out, and see if there are topics there that can really help you and benefit you in transforming your mind and renewing your marriage, no matter where you are in this marriage journey, right? So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching this video. Um, and so my only sort of call to action, my only homework for you is to just be intentional, to hit reply, give me a comment here, and just let me know what it is you are gonna be focusing on today so I can stand in agreement with you, all right? Have a great day and I'll be back with you tomorrow for the continuation of our conversation about breaking free of negative thinking. Okay, have a great day, bye.